We're going to take a look at 7.2 here, which are uh, applications to the normal distribution, and we're basically going to have two objectives here. Number one, find the area under the standard normal curve using the standard normal curve tables and formulas. And then number two, we're going to find z-scores given areas. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look here. Now we're going to find the probabilities given all kinds of situations here. And the first thing to notice here is the probability um, that z equals a particular value of a is zero. And I want you to think about why that is. Uh, so we're going to find the second piece here. We're going to find the probability that z is between a and b. Um, z is greater than a, z is less than a, some particular value, and z is less than a or z is greater than b, so kind of area in the tails kind of thing, okay? So let me show you here. Uh, these are just very simple examples that you'll become familiar with. So we're dealing with the standard normal curve. Remember I told you the mean is zero and we label the axis as z. So let's find minus 2.45. So minus 2.45 is here. And we want to know what this area is here to the left, okay? And so all we're going to do is we're going to look this up in a table. So this is called your standard normal distribution. And just a couple things to notice. The minimum is 3.49. You got your hundredths across the top and then your uh, your ones and your tenths. So minus 3.49 is the smallest, and you've got positive 3.49 is the largest area. So what we're going to do is we're going to find minus 2.45. So minus 2.45. Five, and we get 0071 and that is the that's the area that's the number that we're looking for okay and that is this red area 0071 all right so now the area to the left of minus 0.62 all right so let's do this one Okay, so we find minus 0.62, and then we shade in everything to the left of that. So what's that area? Well, let's go over here and look it up. So minus 0.6, and we start with 0, so 0, 1, 2. So we get 2, 6, 7, 6. 2676, and that's the area that we're looking for. 0, 026. Okay, so you try this one and see if you can get the uh, this one here. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave that one for you. Okay. Now let's take a look at finding the area to the right. Now, what I want to do, this is very important. This table, all of these decimal numbers, not these over here, but all these decimal numbers in this table represent areas to the left. Notice we have Z and we have the area to the left shaded in. To the left shaded in. Okay? So let's do one here. So let's find the area to the uh, where Z is greater than minus 3.01 so we got z we got zero we got minus 3.01 but we want to know the area where z is greater than that so we want to know all of that okay now you could look up the area if you wanted to you can use the complement the total area is one okay and if we look up minus 3.01 it gives us this little tiny area in here so we take one and we take out this and we're left with that. So that's one way to do it. Um, so let me show you here how, how we do that. So the probability that Z is greater than minus 3.01.
is equal to 1 minus the probability where z is to the left, because this is the number we can look up, to the left of minus 3.01. So let's look up minus 3.01. Minus 3.01, and we get 0013. So 1 minus 0 0.0013. And this equals 0 0.9987997. Okay? So that's one way you could do it. The other way is you could recognize that minus 3.01, that the area to the left the area to the right think about it for a second we're looking for the area to the right of 3 that area if you if you look closely at the curve 3.01 is the same area and we should we should get rid of this let's get rid of this We'll do this curve here. Okay, so this this area here, now notice something. The area to the left of positive 3.01 is the same area as the area to the right of minus 3.01, okay? So one way you can do it is whenever you're finding the area to the right, so the probability um, that z is greater than minus 3.01. The rule that you can use is this is equivalent to the probability, and all you have to do, this is just a general rule, is change the sign here, so greater than becomes less than, and change the sign of the number, so negative becomes positive. Then, all you have to do is look up that number there, 3.01, and you get 9987 which is the um, area. So you can either use symmetry or you can use the complement. Okay, now notice here on this one, I just use the rule. So Z is greater than, which means we're trying to find the area to the right, uh, minus one. So I just said, oh, okay, the area to the right of minus 1.59 is the same as the area to the left of positive 1.59. So then I look up positive 1.59 positive 1.59 and I get 9441 which is the area to the right okay so 0 Z minus 1.59 minus 1.59 and so this area here is what we're looking for and all we do is say oh great the area to the right of minus is the same as the area to the left of positive which is and so we get we get this area here that we're looking for all right so I'll let you try the these two here now the other thing we want to learn how to do is find the area in between Okay, so we've got z, 0 in the middle, and we got minus 1.3, minus 1.30, and 2.26, 2.26. And we want to know the shaded in the middle. What is that area? Okay, well, if you notice, when you look up this 2.26, you get the area from this point all the way back. So the area from this point all the way back. And then if you look up minus 1.3, you get the area from this point, we'll do it in green, from this point all the way back. So if you take the area from here back and you take out this little portion from here back, that leaves you with what's in the center. All right, and so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna find the area we write this as the probability where z is less than 2.26 and then we take out minus the probability where z is less than and we subtract so we look up 2.26 from our table 
get 9981, look up minus 1.3, and we get this area, and we subtract the two, and that's going to be what's in the center here. All right, so the last um, type of area problem we're going to look at is where we find the area in the tails. And we've got minus 2.24, got zero in the middle, and 1.46. And we want to know what is the area over here or over here. And remember, or means add. Well, even if I told you to find the red area, you knew that you would add up this over here plus this over here. You don't have to remember that, but just by common sense here, the sum of the two red areas is going to be the addition of the two. So let's look up, since we're trying to find the area to the left of this point, but to the right of this point, let's look this one up first. Minus 2.24 is easy. That just comes right off the table. But remember, this one, we're trying to find the area where z is greater. That's to the right. So what's the rule? Anytime we have the area to the right, we're going to switch the sign, and we're going to change the sign of the number to negative. So now we just look up minus 1.46 from our table and we get 0721 we add those up okay all right so you guys should be good at finding areas to the left to the right in between and in the tails all right so now let's go in the reverse direction now find the z score that corresponds to the given area okay um, so let me say this definition here z alpha you'll see this notation is the z score such that the area under the standard normal curve to the right is alpha. So Z alpha, so if this is Z alpha, then the area to the right is alpha. Okay. So anytime you see Z sub alpha, then you know that alpha, whatever alpha is, that's the area to the right. Okay. So let's take a look here. Find the Z score such that the area under the curve to its left is 0.1. Let me ask you this. What's the area to the left of 0? A half, right? What's the area to the right of 0? A half. So if we want to find the z-score that separates the area under the standard to its left is 0.1, then the z-score must be over here. Okay. So the question is, what is this z-score here? such that this area to the left is 0.1. All right, and so here we're going to use something called the inverse norm. And the arguments will be uh, 0, 1, and then the left tail area. Tail area. And we do find, we're, we're finding the left tail area here, the area to the left of z is 0.1. So we just uh, enter this into our calculator here. So here's how you get to inverse norm, second distribution. Inverse norm will be three. The area, Okay, so it looks like these are reversed here. Okay, so here's the arguments. Let's let's make <clears throat> let's make a correction here. So we've got the left tail area comes first. Tail area. And then we put zero one. Standard deviation is zero. Uh, mean is here. And standard deviation. And for a z-score, we know that z always follows a normal with the mean and a standard deviation, 0, 1. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and type in 0. 0.1. Mean is 0, paste. Okay, and we get minus 1.28. We always round z-scores to two decimal places. So this is minus 1.28. All right, let's try some more. Okay, find the area under the standard to its right is 0.25. So 
So again, so now we've got this area to the, so what is Z? So the area to the right is 0.25. So if the area to the right is 0.25, be very careful here, the area to the left is 0.75, because that's what you have to enter into the function. So when you do inverse norm, you're going to do left tail area. Well, here's the z-score. What's the left tail area? The left tail area is 0.75. So be very careful about that. Um, and then 0, 1. All right, let's see what we get. Okay, so we'll go back to second distribution. 3.75 0 1 paste Enter. okay we get 0.67 so this is this is z-score here is 0.67 Okay, so let's try this one. Find the z-scores that separate the middle 99%. So this time, we've got two z-scores. What are this? What is this? Such that the middle is 99%. So the middle 99%. So that means we've got 1% split into the two tails. So we've got 0 0.05 over here. And let's see, one percent. It's actually a half of a percent, so point oh oh five over here, and point oh oh five over there. So now just use the inverse norm. Inverse norm. Okay. What is the left tail area here? Well, it's point oh oh five. Zero, 01. So let's look it up. So we got inverse norm. Option number three, point oh oh five, zero one, paste, enter. So we get uh, 2.58, 2.58. Eight. So these guys here are 2.58. So minus 2.58, and this one's 2.58, because it's the same, it's just on the other side. So um, now we could do, what's the area to the left of this point? Well, it's uh, 0.995. Just add up this area here plus this area here. So the area to the left of this point is 0.995, and you'll see that if you enter... 0 0.99501 you get the you get the positive 2.58 or you could just use symmetry and see okay all right so now um, let's do a couple of these so example here so remember this is right tail area so this must be over here 0.01 Point oh two, very similar. Area to the right is 0.85. That means it must be over here. So this area to the right, because remember, this is the right tail area. So all this is 0.85. And then 0.6 is going to be a little further. It's going to be 0.6. Okay, so this area here is 0.85. This is 0.6. This is 0.2. And this is 0.1. So now we just look up the inverse. Now, remember when we do inverse norm, inverse norm, we have to enter left tail area. Left tail area goes here. Left tail area. So if 0.01 is on this, then 0.99 is over here. 0 0.9901. 0, and this would be left tail area. So inverse norm would be 0 0.9801.
And if 85% is to the right, then remember inverse norm, inverse norm must have area to the left, so 0 0.15, 0, 1. And if the area to the right is 0 0.6, then the inverse norm it takes the left tail area. Remember, left tail area goes here. Okay, left tail area. So we've got to get left tail area. If 0.6 is to the right, then 0 0.4 is over here. So 0 0.4, 0, 1. And then just type those into the calculators and you will get all of these Z scores here. So Z score. So let's just do, I'll just do this one down here. What is this Z score here? So we got 0.4. So let's do second distribution. Inverse norm, 0 0.4, 0, 0.1, paste, and we get minus 0 0.25. So, 0.25 is the Z score. Z, 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 Z. Okay, so let's look at an actual application problem here where we're going to use all this stuff. Um, we have steel rods manufactured with a mean length of 25 centimeters. Okay, Because of the variability in the manufacturing process, the lengths of rods are approximately normal, standard deviation of 0.07. So what proportion of rods has a length less than 24.9? So we got X is the length of rod. And we got the mean is 25. What proportion are less than 24.9? So 24.9 are going to be over here. And we want to look that up. Okay. So what proportion of rods X less than 24.9? So what we have to do is remember the big idea in 7.2, convert. Convert X's into Z's, okay? This is what we're going to be doing. This is the key idea here, X's into Z's. How do we do that? We do that using this formula here. We convert our boundary points, and we do that using the Z-score formula, X minus the mean over standard deviation. So let's do that. X minus the mean over standard deviation gives us minus 1.43. So this X becomes Z. Okay. And now, guess what? We just look up the Z score in table, uh, table 5. So let's go back over here and look it up. Minus 1.4. 0, 1, 2, 3, and we get 0, 7, 6, 4. 0, 7, 6, 4. So roughly, so think about the meaning here. Okay? Roughly 7 out of 100 rods will be less than 24.9 centimeters. Okay? That's what that means. All right, let's try another one here. Okay? What proportion of rods are shorter than 24.85 or longer than 25.15? Well, let's draw a picture. First thing I want you to do is draw a picture. What are we going to do? Pause the video. Tell me what we're going to do. We're going to convert X's into Z's. So let's get our 25 in the middle. 25.15. 24.85. What pr proportion of rods are shorter than 24.85 or longer than 25.15? So what is this? So that's going to be X less than X less than 24.85 or X greater than 25.15. So what we have to do is convert our two boundary points. Okay, we have to, then this is the key point. 
we have to convert our boundary points using the z-score formula. So we get x minus the mean over the standard deviation, so we get minus 2.14 and 25, convert this boundary point minus the mean over the standard, and we get 2.14, okay? So notice what's happened here. Now, or means, right, means add. Remember that, or means add. So what, look what have we done. We've converted X's into Z's. And so now we just look this one up to in the chart because the arrow is pointing to the left. But this one, remember, whenever we're finding the area to the right, what do we do? Pause the video and tell me. That's right. We change the sign, the inequality sign, and we change the sign of the number. So now we just, and notice these two are the same, so I was cleverly just put a 2 out beside here because they're, this area is the same as this area. So I looked up minus 2.14, and I got this number times 2, and so this is the, this is the solution here. Okay? Um, now, if, uh, now think about this. If 5,000 rods are manufactured in a day, how many should the plant manager discard? Because they're going to discard them one. Think about this. Why are they going to throw them out? Well, some of them are too short and some of them are too long. Right? They can't sell them. So they have to, re -scrap, have to scrap them, recycle the metal. Okay? Go through it again. Go through it again. Right? So this percentage, they scrap. Right? Can't sell. So how many do they discard? Well, this percentage times however many they make gives us approximately 162 that they will uh, discard, okay? Now, you can go through this one. I want you to think about this one here. And there's two ways to do it. See if you can think about the two ways to, to do it. Okay, now we want to do, now we want to do the reverse, reverse picture here, okay? So now, we want to um, find a percentile, okay? So let's take this application problem. This is for elementary school teachers or education people, all right? It says the reading speed of sixth grade students is approximately normal with the mean of 125, okay? Mean of 125, standard deviation of 24. What is the reading speed of a sixth grader whose reading speed is at the 90th percentile? Remember percentiles? So this would be X. We eventually convert into Z. Put X first, and then we'll put Z down here. So the 50th percentile is 125, right? Half students read slower than 125 words per minute, and half students read more than 120. We want the 90th percentile. That's going to be right here, right? Such that 90%, such that 90%, are less than this reading speed. What is this reading speed? Well, here's the formula we're going to use for this. Okay. Um, now notice we've already got the mean is 125. We've already got the standard deviation is 24. The only thing that we're missing here is the z-score. Okay. What is this z-score here? Right. What is this z-score? Oh, z-score, question mark. Well, we can do that. We can look that up. What's the area to the left of z? That's 90%, so inverse norm. Inverse norm, 0.9, 0, 0.1, what we just did. And let's look it up. So now when you look it up, you get 1.28. All right, and now we can just plug in z. So we get the mean plus z times sigma. Z is 1.2. And we get basically that the 90th percentile is 156 words per minute. Okay? Now, what reading score separates the middle 95%? So again, right, we're looking for two reading speeds, x and x, such that this middle is 95%. 
right? So we want the slow students and the, fa and the fast students. So if 95 is in the middle, then 5% is split into the two tails. So we got 2.5% over here, 0 0.025, and 2.5% 2 .5 over here. All right, so we need the z-score, right? Because we're using our formula here. We need the z-score here and here. And notice they're going to be the same. Once we find this one, this one's going to be the same except the positive, right? Because we got, for z, the mean is, is 0. So we do inverse norm. Inverse norm. 0.025, 0, 0.01, you look that up, we get minus 1.96. And if that's minus 1.96, z equals minus 1.96, then this over here is going to be z equals positive 96. And so at this point, we just plug in the mean and the standard deviation and the z-score, and we get the lower bound, this, this right here, is 78 words per minute and this one is 172 words per minute. Okay, um, so I hope that this helps you uh, guys get a feel for 7.2. These are some application kinds of questions. And so hopefully I'll be back uh, and we can take a look at chapter 8 um, per my return. Have a fantastic afternoon, and I will see you guys next class period.